As China-Taiwan tensions simmer, we on goes on the ground. Tensions between Beijing and Taipei are at an all-time high, but the big question on everyone's mind is will China invade Taiwan? Decoding the US-China face-off. Behind the Chinese fury is the Americans. Tensions peak when US House Speaker Nancy Pelosi visited Taipei, and that was the red line for Beijing. From people to the politics, Weon gets you all sides of the story from Taiwan. Taiwan matters to the world. New Delhi, Washington and Beijing. Most comprehensive coverage of the big battle between superpowers. While the war in Ukraine has the world on the edge, war clouds are now hovering over Taiwan. Enraged by US House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's visit, Beijing launched massive military drills around Taiwan, including firing ballistic missiles and sending multiple fighter jets and vessels. Amidst hostilities with China, Taiwan is also actively preparing itself. The island nation has conducted drills simulating defense against a potential invasion by the People's Liberation Army. Fighter jets, anti-aircraft systems, and military drills. Taiwan is undeterred. It's standing up to the Chinese aggression. The island is showcasing its military might. Taiwanese F-16 fighters roared into the night sky, showing its combat readiness and determination to defend its territory. This is Hualien Air Base on Taiwan's mountainous east coast, where Taiwanese pilots are on alert. Ready to take to the skies in less than six minutes. The message is clear. They are ready to challenge the mighty Chinese. The tension uh, between the Taiwan Strait is getting higher, and it's obvious in knowing that. Um, but that's still what we're training for, and it's what we're preparing for. So they come and uh, we rise, and so our scramble jet will never stop, and uh, we will stop their uh, offender and in outside our uh, defense identity, uh, in outside our ADIZ. Taiwan also displayed its most advanced fighter jet, the missile-equipped F-16V. It was organized by the Taiwanese government. We are under more pressure, but that doesn't mean we can't do our jobs or do it properly because there is pressure. The people who live on this land are our relatives, our families. Our present democratic way of life is very precious to us. The pressure which our enemy is exerting on us will not stop us from protecting our country. Taiwanese forces are keeping a hawk eye on the skies too. Anti-aircraft guns are armed and loaded. The Taiwan-made Skybao-3 anti-air missile and Wehrlikon 35mm anti-air cannon are part of the drills in response to a simulated missile attack from the People's Liberation Army. We were not nervous at all that time, as a regular training is prepared for all-day 24-hour missile operations. When the Chinese military acted, we were already well prepared. Our soldiers followed the standard operating procedure, which is our troop training program as per normal. So actually we were not nervous at all. We were just excited to finish our mission. Taiwan lives under constant threat of an invasion by China. Beijing claims the democratically ruled island as part of its territory to be seized one day, by force if necessary. Taiwan has been upgrading its aging fleet of fighters in recent years, as fear of military action by Beijing rises. Its air force is kept under constant pressure by more frequent Chinese incursions into its air defense zone. On Thursday, Taiwan's defense ministry said 51 Chinese aircraft and six Chinese ships had been detected operating around Taiwan.
The message from Beijing is clear. It wants to keep Taipei on edge. And through repeated military maneuvers, Xi Jinping has made his intent clear, reminding Taiwan how quickly it can be attacked. And with the Chinese vowing to continue military drills, the world watches with bated breath as war clouds loom over Taiwan. Amidst military drills and heated exchanges, tensions between Beijing and Taipei are at an all-time high. But the big question on everyone's mind is will China invade Taiwan? And if that happens, can a self-governing island, which China considers a renegade province, defend itself? Well, in terms of military power, China completely outclasses Taiwan, but the latter has the support of the West. China's military exercises close to Taiwan carry a straight message from Beijing to Taipei. They seek a cross-strait resolution not by peaceful means but by force. But could China really take Taiwan by force if it wanted to? China is not just an economic powerhouse, it has a massive military. Its defense spending is second only to the United States. From missile technologies to naval power, and over the past few years, it has massively enhanced its capabilities. But how does it compare to that of Taiwan's? Let's understand. China has a defense budget of $230 billion, while Taiwan has a defense budget of $16.8 billion. China's active personnel stand at 2 million, and for Taiwan, the number stands at 170,000. Reserve personnel for China stand at 510,000, and Taiwan's is 1,500,000. Coming to tank strength now, for China it stands at 5,250, and for Taiwan it stands at just over 1,000. China has 35,000 armored vehicles, and Taiwan has close to 3,500. In terms of fighter aircraft too, China's fleet overwhelms that of Taiwan's. China has 1,200 fighter aircraft, and Taiwan has just 288. Attack helicopters, China has 281, and Taiwan, 91. China has a fleet strength of 777, and the number for Taiwan stands at 117. China has at least 79 submarines, and Taiwan just four. And lastly, China has 41 destroyers, and Taiwan four. So clearly, Taiwan's armored forces cannot be compared to Beijing's military might. China's state-run tabloid Global Times says the ongoing exercises around Taiwan are a rehearsal for reunification. It says operational plans will likely be directly translated into combat. China is not afraid of exercising its military option. It is not something Beijing has not done before. In 1949, Taiwanese leader Chiang Kai-shek lost the civil war to Mao Zedong's communists. Chiang then fled to China. The Eisenhower administration in the US wanted to sign a mutual defense treaty with him. So China, under Mao, swung into action. It launched an attack on two Taiwanese islands, Kinmen and Matsu. Both islands were bombarded with artillery. Now, 70 years later, Beijing could be considering using similar tactics. The People's Liberation Army has already deployed assets in Fujian. It is the closest Chinese province to Taiwan. 
China is also sending some serious firepower to this province. Reports say China has moved armored vehicles, short-range ballistic missiles and tanks. There is speculation that China could use these assets for an operation against Taiwan. But taking Taiwan by force also carries significant risks. Experts say the Chinese forces would have to cross the Taiwan Strait with more than 100,000 troops. During this, its troops could face aerial and naval bombardment. If its soldiers do manage to make it to Taiwan's shores, they would find it extremely difficult to make a landing. As its rugged coastline offers few suitable options for unloading armored personnel, tanks and artillery. Another significant risk is a larger conflict between China and the United States. So the biggest question right now, will Xi Jinping invade Taiwan? For now, it is hard to say, but a worried Taiwan is preparing for all scenarios. Behind the Chinese fury is the Americans. Tensions peak when U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi visited Taipei, and that was a red line for Beijing. But is there more at play? Is it a battle of egos between two superpowers vying for supremacy, in which Taiwan has been caught right in the center? Our next report explores. In 1997, Newt Gingrich visited Taiwan. He was then House Speaker of the United States. Gingrich led a delegation of 13 U.S. House of Representatives to Asia. But his April 2nd stopover in Taiwan was unannounced. That was a very different time. In Taiwan, the then President Li Tenghui had returned to office. He won by a large margin after the first direct presidential election. As for China, it had other priorities. Then President Jiang Zemin's government was preparing to celebrate Hong Kong's return. He wanted to lock in Beijing's emergence from diplomatic isolation. So China grumbled but swallowed its irritation. It wanted to avoid a disruptive clash with the United States. 25 years later, things are very different. Back then, America was reaching the peak of its powers. China, on the other hand, was an emerging nation. It was a no contest. Now, China is a superpower. It's got a formidable military and far less willing to compromise over Taiwan. So when Nancy Pelosi visited Taiwan, it was a red line. But why did the US House Speaker suddenly visit Taipei? One, there is strong bipartisan support for Taiwan in the US Congress. Two, Pelosi has been a vocal critic of China. And thirdly, with the US House Speaker rumored to retire soon, this could be her last big trip. Pelosi said that the trip was in the spirit of solidarity to show that the United States stands by Taiwan. The people of Taiwan have proven to the world that with hope, courage and determination, it is possible to build a peaceful and prosperous future, even in terms of the challenges you face. And now more than ever, America's solidarity with Taiwan is crucial, and that is the message we are bringing here. Today. Soon after China kicked off its military drills, the largest in the region in years, the idea was simple to intimidate and get the island to tow its line. People of China will not allow any foreign force to bully, suppress or enslave us. Whoever wants to do so will be on a collision course with a great wall of steel forged by the 1.4 billion Chinese people. So here is what the situation is right now. Taiwan has become a flashpoint. Across the waters is China. Beijing claims the island as a part of its territory. Countering Beijing is Washington. It is playing the role of the neighborhood police. Both the countries are not willing to back down. But the biggest question is, will this escalate into a war? Most likely, no. 
Taiwan does not have a mutual defense pact with the United States. Neither does it have full-fledged diplomatic ties. Washington abides by the one-China policy, so it really comes down to political will. Does Joe Biden have the appetite to drag America into war? So far, he's picked the middle ground, what experts call strategic ambiguity. Sort of like, will he, won't he? Here's how it works. China cannot be sure if America will directly defend Taiwan. America will not say if they will directly defend Taiwan. This ambiguity maintains the status quo. Amid the uncertainties, people living on the front-line islands of Taiwan are getting increasingly worried. The military exercises and the prospect of an invasion by China have them on the edge. Check out this ground report on the apprehension and concerns of the people on these islands. The sound of war drums is not restricted to the walls of failing diplomacy anymore. It has gone beyond and is the loudest since the 1950s, while the entire island faces an uncertain future. China's threat affects one region more than the other. This is Taiwan. It looks like a block of islands sitting at the junction of the East and South China Sea. But it actually extends very close to mainland China. Enter Matsu Islands. This archipelago is home to about 13,500 Taiwanese people and is now at the forefront of a looming war. Matsu is just 9 kilometers away from China and war strategists say that any plans of invasion will most likely start here. No, I don't really feel a sense of safety. After all, this island of Tongyin is the front line of the battlefield. We don't have anywhere to go where we could feel safe. Because if China shoots at us with projectiles, a small island like ours could be taken down in a moment. The tenuous times are like deja vu for the region. Elaborate tunnel networks and military fortifications from the Cold War era are a testimony of their past conflicts. While the spirit is mostly high and people stand united against China's aggression, some have decided to go down the practical road. China's ground military is ten times that of Taiwan. And if the US and Japan don't step in, a war will translate into unimaginable damage for the Taiwanese people. As Matsu people believe and hope for peace between both sides, if that's really not possible, we lean more towards unification due to our geography. Being so close to the mainland, independence is impossible and not allowed. That's the situation I understand. Personally, I feel the communist Chinese military exercise is something our country needs to bear. Because of our unique geopolitical situation and our history, we are stuck between the two superpowers, the United States and China. We are a pawn in the whole Indo-Pacific strategic region. Matsu Island is not the only one at the front line. This is Kinmen region just six kilometers from the mainland, where the U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi didn't even set her foot. But a visit to Taipei was enough to bring the region to a standstill. Not very far away from the beaches, littered by rusted-out tanks, this 92-year-old veteran reads his newspaper. The pages were in the shadow of the enemy, even before Nancy Pelosi's Spar 19 landed in the strait. But having witnessed China's deadliest bombardment more than 60 years ago, he smiles and calls the military drills a small fry. This time, the Chinese military exercise didn't affect Kinmen at all. Not like back in 1949 or during the 823 bombardments when Chinese forces surrounded Kinmen. There is none of that this time. Despite the bitter memories of conflict and current tensions, many Kinmen residents hold friendly views of the Chinese people. After all, it is a short stretch of sea. And like most borders that are born out of conflicts, people on either side resonate more with each other than one would expect. I think a war is possible, but I hope people from both sides and also both governments can communicate more 
After all, only through communication can peace be achieved. Having no communication will only lead to hatred for each other. Kinmen and Matsu had once served as natural barriers to invasion. But over decades of investing heavily in its defense, China has managed to use the same two islands as potential pawns today. And the people of these two strategically located islands are wary of that. Today there is fear, there is resilience, but there is also a sense of reason that is overpowering the spirit of a spontaneous battle. They seem to agree with an unpopular opinion. War is a tricky affair. The only way to win is to not play it at all. Why is a tiny island nation the bone of contention between US and China? And why is the prospect of a much wider conflict making the world anxious? 15 countries recognize Taiwan, but none of them is a major economic or military power. So why and how does Taiwan matter to the world? Our next report brings you all the answers. Taiwan, this subtropical island of the South China Sea, has been a policy football of sorts. This island has been a subset object at the prey of larger geopolitical forces ever since its discovery in the 1600s. Taiwan has been a victim of changing hands ever since. From Portuguese to China to Japan and then China again, including the West. If we talk about Taiwan's luck in 2022, then the West, especially the US, is also responsible. In 1950, a civil war broke out to claim the control of China. The Republic of China versus People's Republic of China. Authoritarian Chiang Kai-shek against Communist Mao Zedong. Taiwan versus Beijing. And the Western countries recognized Taiwan as the real and only China. In 1954, the first Taiwan Strait crisis broke out. Two of Taiwan's islands were armed and then bombed. Kinmen and Matsu. Four years later, another crisis broke out, and these two islands were bombed again. This was the era that made Taiwan significant. But the Cold War turned Taiwan's luck around, and it was the US which partially changed Taiwan's fate. Mao's China became strategically important to the US. In 1971, the United Nations chose to recognize Beijing as the real China and dumped Taiwan. By 1976, both Chiang Kai-shek and Mao Zedong died. Deng Xiaoping became the leader of China. He began opening China to the world. Over the next 10 years, relations improved between China and Taiwan. People were allowed to visit families on either side. Trade across the Taiwan Strait also improved, but as economic ties deepened, so did cultural divisions. People in Taiwan began identifying as Taiwanese, not Chinese. In 1992, a historic meeting was held in Hong Kong, called the Consensus. As per China, Beijing and Taipei agreed on one China policy. It was apparently a verbal consensus. Taiwan and China have different understandings as to what the policy entails. So both the parties agreed that there is one China, but disagreed to what China means. 30 years on, this difference continues. In between these three decades, a lot of significant incidents and elections happened. Chen Sui Ban's presidency in 2000, the anti-secession law by Beijing, the Sunflower Movement in 2014, Xi Jinping's presidency and America's Taiwan Travel Act of 2018. You see, US has been maintaining unofficial ties with the island since 1979, for the first three decades of the Cold War, and America is the main contender against China. It has a Taiwan Relations Act from 1979, signed into law by President Jimmy Carter. The American Act is known as the principal instrument through which the United States conducts legal arms sales to Taiwan. 
and other Western countries have followed suit. Taiwan's economy is among the 25th largest in the world. The EU is its largest foreign investor and its strongest international backer, despite having no formal relations. US-Taiwan ties are probably the closest they've ever been. Taiwan also has a geostrategic importance to the United States and its allies in Northeast Asia. Taiwan sits in the center of the first island chain, which China views as a central part of US strategy to contain Chinese military projection. To the south of the island is the Bashi Channel, part of the Luzon Strait, one of the few international waterways through which China's naval forces can threaten US territories, including Guam, Hawaii and the continental United States. But military planners in the United States have understood the geostrategic significance of Taiwan since the Cold War. Put differently, the US government understands what China fears most. And it's not Taiwan per se, it is Taiwan's democracy and the fear of siding with America. So when Americans see China ratcheting up pressure against the island nation and Beijing issuing threats to reunify by force, they do not see just a threat to liberty. America sees it as a threat to themselves. As China-Taiwan tensions simmer, Weon goes on the ground. Tensions between Beijing and Taipei are at an all-time high, but the big question on everyone's mind is will China invade Taiwan? Decoding the US-China face-off. Behind the Chinese fury is the Americans. Tensions peak when US House Speaker Nancy Pelosi visited Taipei, and that was the red line for Beijing. From people to the politics, Weon gets you all sides of the story from Taiwan. Taiwan matters to the world. New Delhi, Washington and Beijing. Most comprehensive coverage of the big battle between superpowers.